We're Embrace the Suck 21. Yes, we are. I'm Spencer. And I'm Daniel. And this week, we are celebrating the big milestone of 100,000 subscribers. Man, what? Oh, God. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. Feels yeah. like yesterday. No, just kidding. It feels like eons. Mm -hmm. Feels like mm -hmm. eons. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be having this conversation a lot this week. Yes. Because we're revisiting the five niches that got us to where we are music comedy stick -up ball sports history and today we're doing motorsports this is two part of our motorsport homage and today we're talking about the nascar garage 56 entry into this year's 24 hours of le mans now, and i want to pronounce it le mans or le lemons Man the mans the mans anyway. <laughs> a lot of people particularly those who came for our motorsport reactions our rally reactions other non-nascar related motorsport type things were asking for us to do reactions to it but at the time it was happening we really weren't doing that kind of thing nope. but i personally watched it i got a motor trend plus subscription i had it on the tv while i was working on some in-betweeners reactions editing nice. them down for youtube so it was a lot of fun to watch it was a lot of fun to see this garage 56 nascar entry mix it up with over in Europe and break a lot of stereotypes of NASCAR that were just a bunch of hillbillies that go around in a circle. We're more than that. Yeah. Hey, hey, listen, I'm a fan of it. I've grown to like it. You know what I mean? Like, I've grown to appreciate the sport behind. I need to get out and go to an event like this, like a motorsport event. And I think that's what'll sell me. I mean, dude, I live 15, 20 minutes away from Martinsville Speedway. So, hell yes. Just let me know either April or October in the current schedule. So, all right there you go anyway you ready to go in bro? yeah man i'm always let's go let's do it all right three two one look at this yep that's a nascar stock car competing with gts and prototypes at le mans and they were quicker than ferrari aston martin and porsche it's a next gen camaro that has been adapted to work at le mans but if you missed it you might be a bit confused about how this came about nascar has changed a lot recently with newer more aerodynamic cars just like in the movie jackson storm well, like Three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sent a lot wheel nuts rather than the th 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 lug nuts that they used to run. They've even moved to more F1 looking tires rather than the old style tall sidewall ones. Also adding a rear diffuser typical on other race cars but very new for stock cars. But one of the bigger changes is that they're running more road courses than they used to. Racing at tracks like Circuit of the Americas, Watkins Glen and a favourite of mine, the Charlotte Roval. So, stock cars... Okay, have to fact check him there. Watkins Glen has been on the schedule for, like, eons. Really? The Charlotte Roval and Circuit of the Americas are recent additions. Now, for those of us, I don't know who that would be, not understanding uh, this terminology, what the fuck is a Roval? Oh, a Roval. It's a, uh, a combination road course oval. Got uh, it. Because Charlotte Motor Speedway, uh, the, one of the main tracks of the nascar circuit in fact on memorial day weekend it has one of the crown jewel events the coca-cola 600 that's on the oval and it used to have two dates and the second date in the fall wasn't really selling that well so to spice things up a bit they started they built a road course in the infield of this place and they used part of the oval track as part of the road course in there so hence roval. roval got it yeah okay just i'm just you know terminology I'm like, yeah, I've learned yeah. a lot of shapes in my life. Roval is not one of them. So, yep. now here we you go. Know. Now I know. Roval. Roval aren't just for turning left and they've shown that in recent seasons but not in the same way that gt cars or prototypes can handle le mans for 24 hours though right so nascar teamed up with hendrick motorsports to take a zl1 camaro stock car to le mans taking a 3000 pound stock car with no doors no headlights and a 5.8 liter rumbling v8 to le mans it seems absolutely bonkers and many fans were excited to see a nascar race at le mans and many were not i've had a lot of drivers say why are you doing this what, what do you get out of it fun what's the point otherwise if you're not smiling what's the point of doing it lots of people that by the way that's 2009 f1 world champion jensen button he was part of the three drivers that raced it was him imsa like sports car racer mike rockefeller and seven-time nascar champion jimmy johnson were the three drivers all right People were concerned that the car would keep up on the straights, but be a moving chicane through the corners. The Le Mans organizers even proposed waving a white flag at every marshal post the car drove past to warn other classes it was there. 
And this is literally the flag that marshals wave to warn you that a crashed or broken car is slowly driving back to the pits. And that's a bit insulting really, and I'm not sure the marshals would have been keen either. But they were so wrong about the 24 car's pace, but we'll get to that in a little while. So they assembled the team for it, recruiting Mike Rockefeller, Le Mans winner with Audi, the NASCAR legend Jimmy Johnson and Jensen Button. And that's quite a lineup. And they were quick. They entered under the Garage 56 entry, the experimental entry that we've seen a few times before. You might remember the Delta Wing, and we made a video oh. about that as well. So although the car would race at Le Mans, it would technically be in its own class, subjecting it to special rules. So, for example, no matter where they qualified, they would still have to start at the back of the pack. Now, although NASCAR race on road circuits, a stock car would be a fair way off the pace compared to a GTE car, let alone an LMP2 or hypercar. So Hendrick Motorsports and Garage 56 set to work on developing a stock car that could work work at Le Mans. They had big aspirations, hoping to beat some of the GTE cars. And these are cars that have been developed for years to be incredible at Le Mans, with lots of downforce but very low drag, something that you need at Le Mans due to the long straights. Le Mans is actually pretty unique as it has several super long straights, but also fast sweeping corners and super tight chicanes. Aerodynamic efficiency is everything at Le Mans. So, what did they do? Well, the first thing was that the car didn't need to conform to any rule book. The standard engine restrictions that apply in NASCAR came off. So in cup racing, the engine runs at 510 horsepower on the fast tracks and 670 horsepower everywhere else. But Hendrick Motorsport... Yeah, that's the new uh, horsepower. Damn. And a lot of people have been complaining that there's not enough horsepower on the short tracks. And I agree. Like, wow. I went to Martinsville earlier this year, and it was a lot of follow the leader. Like, when the engines had, you know, 750 horsepower, 800 horsepower, that's when the beating and banging started. And that's when that was proper short track race. And then, you know, in the Gen 6 era, uh, the package for road courses was 750 horsepower, oh. that's, which made for exciting uh, racing, too. And now the road course package is six. Uh, 650 or whatever they said it was and so it's, it's like bland yeah it's become a little blander the mile and a half package the cookie cutter package uh which a lot of people ragged on for years is actually the the more exciting one now huh. that and uh super speedways like daytona talladega and the new really reconfigured atlanta those are i just want to put that out there hey man you're good man you're talking you're talking to to the gearheads, and I'm just learning. I was like, damn, there's a lot of numbers. Like, I don't even know what yeah. that man just said. But right. I'm here for it. <laughs> but because this is Le Mans, and because it's not in a typical NASCAR race, and it's the Garage 56 entry, they put more horses underneath this. Hell one. yeah got the engine up to about 750 horsepower. See? That's 150 more than the 600 horsepower that the GTE cars generally run. But they could have actually got more out of it if it weren't for one thing. The engine normally runs for 500 miles or so before a rebuild, whereas in a 24-hour race, this engine would need to have a life cycle of around 5,000 miles. So they kept the RPM limit a little lower to reduce stress on the valve train. But the fundamental components of the engine stayed exactly the same as the stock car, and that meant that it sounded did absolutely awesome. Just listen to the difference compared to the other cars. <laughs> the rear mounted <laughs> trans <laughs> Take oh, yeah. that! Hell You're up. yeah! Hell yeah! Fuck it! <laughs> Burning that's those like, fossil fuels, man. No, yeah, no, that's like that's no the guitar solo in Freebird right there. <laughs> yeah, fucking all right. Yeah, I'm like goddamn Godzilla, man. I love that. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> wheel, wheel. Oh, like, what the fuck is that? An earthquake? Like, oh, that's, no, that's American uh, muscle. Yeah, we're gonna look at that one again. Yeah, just for shits and giggles. That's awesome. The other cast. <laughs> mounted transaxle gearbox was the same as the stock car, but with one difference. They ran a Formula One style steering wheel with paddle shift, rather than the sequential stick shift on the stock car. Now, with all that power, the issue of stopping the car became a problem. So they swapped the usual steer brakes that don't get used a whole bunch on a stock car and swapped them for full carbon-carbon brakes, much like the other cars on the grid at Le Mans. The biggest visual difference on this car is all of the aero. Just look at it. The car has enormous dive planes on the front, a massive front splitter, and enormous canards on the rear. These dive planes work by directing the air upwards, creating an equal and opposite reaction, 
pushing the car downward. The package was all to create as much downforce as possible without losing the NASCAR look of the car. They could have added an enormous rear wing to the car, but decided that's not the NASCAR way. So they stuck with a spoiler but made it absolutely enormous. The result was that the car created 50% more downforce than its next-gen counterpart. Oh. And one other thing they kept the same was the lack of doors. So during the pit stops, the drivers were climbing through the windows. Oh, and the pit crew were also keeping up with the GTE teams, despite not having air jacks and using a manual jack. Goodyear worked with the team to create a new tire as well. They understood that the car would be super rear limited, with the hard traction zones at Le Mans, as well as the fast corners. So if they ran the standard cup tire, they would have have to pit twice as often as the GTE cars. So Goodyear designed a custom tyre that's two inches wider at the rear. They also had a super clever tyre temperature sensor that is laminated into the tyres rather than the wheel rim. It's lighter and it's more accurate in the data that it delivers. This car is really a test bed for new technology. Then wow. there was the biggest task. The cup car runs at just under 1500 kilos and for a race car that is a lot. A full 300 kilos heavier than the GTE cars wow. and 500 kilos heavier than the hypercars. So the team shared 220 kilograms from the car. They're getting super clever with materials. Firstly, there are a load of things that this car just doesn't need. Stock cars have special reinforced structures at the front and rear of the car, allowing them to bump draft. Where one car can sit in the slipstream with less drag and it actually pushes the car in front forwards. It allows two cars to work together and it's super common in oval racing. So they bin that and then they swap lots of panels for carbon fiber rather than the steel. Goodyear even cut down the weight of each tire. And also there was one other thing. This car had to have headlights and we all know that stock cars run stickers. And the car drove well. It was clear that this Camaro could be a real match for the GTE cars, which to many was a real surprise. I have to say it's pretty fun to drive. <laughs> it's, it's really fun to drive. You know, the, I think a lot of people were scared at how slow it would be through the Porsche curves. Then, with a bit more work before qualifying, the Camaro out-qualified the entire GTE field. Jensen Button set a time of 3 minutes 47.9 a proper quick time around this circuit, wow. with the fastest GTE setting a time of 3 minutes and 51. <laughs> now, that is impressive. But there is one thing I need to make clear. The GTE field are a closely regulated pack, with massive regulations on aero, power, tyres, the lot. And the NASCAR was completely free of regulation. And the GTE field has a balance of performance, BOP, where limits are put on weight, power, fuel load, and more to make sure all the very different GTE cars are super close in performance. And really, the only limit on the Garage 56 car was that the team wanted it to look like a NASCAR. So bear that in mind. Now, that incredible qualifying performance caused an issue. The rules of the Garage 56 entry say that they should start at the back of the pack, with the order being Hypercar, LMP2, GTE, then Garage 56. But given the pace difference, they were concerned about the carnage of the NASCAR coming through the field in the first few laps. So they let the car start between the GTEs and the LMP2s. And on the race wow. start, the NASCAR absolutely left the GTE field and even overtook a couple of LMP2 cars. The car absolutely flew in the traction zones and on the first half of the straights, but the aero wasn't quite as efficient at the end of the straights, meaning that the GTEs caught them up, but braking was their main issue. Braking is probably the area that's, that's the toughest for us. It's oh, a big really? thing to try and stop into these chicanes. Looking so unusual, the car was a massive fan favorite, with many fans saying you could hear the car coming for miles, with many complaining that it was the car keeping them awake through the night. So the car worked well at the start of the race. But then Le Mans did its thing. It absolutely tipped down with cars skidding off everywhere. The Garage 56 car held on. Because despite the tires, the aero and the lower weight, this thing was a handful. You could see it was super sketchy on braking through the corner and also on the exit. But you find that cars with more power than grip are just a real handful. But if balanced really well, they can be incredibly fun to drive. But later in the race, they had their first big issue. The gearbox exploded. All that power had destroyed the gearbox entirely with it sounding absolutely dreadful. Just listen to this. 
and this was the NASCAR out because you're not allowed to swap a gearbox at Le Mans. But after asking nicely, the team actually were allowed to swap it as they were the experimental entry. So after an hour in the garage, the car was back out there. But this problem had pushed them back to 39th overall before finishing the race. And just like the Delta Wing, Le Mans had provided the perfect place to try something bonkers in the hope of pushing technology forward. All right. Super cool, man. Yeah, yes. man. I'm glad <laughs> yeah. that they let them come back. But then again, a lot of NASCAR heads in here will be like, oh, that's Hendrick Motorsports always cheating. They're like, for context, they're like the Patriots of NASCAR. Got like, it. But then again, legends like Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson, Dale Jr. have all come through there. And yep. not these days, Chase Elliott, Kyle Larson. So the, they like, play within the politics. They got the, the bank account to throw around. So. Yeah, yeah, they knew the political game like Alain Prost yeah. did in Senate documentary. Yeah. Like they know how to play the political game. Yeah, but it's it's interesting, man, that it held its own. You know, because it's yeah. kind of like I've never put those two kinds of cars together. You know, because I almost feel like you can't because one is just beefier. One right. doesn't look like an airplane. Right. One looks right. kind of like the shit that's driving around right now. You know. Right. Hence the name stock car yeah it's in stock you can go buy it right well, now kind of right because that's probably kind of. a good that's a good maybe three hundred thousand four hundred thousand dollar car right there oh yeah it, if more. you're lucky yeah yeah more but, yeah but man god that's awesome that sound was terrifying <laughs> like, nah, it's that's american horsepower right there that's, yeah that's good some big dick god. energy right there that's, that's like real courtesy of the red white and blue yeah, just saying, going oh, down. The thing that comes out is Toby Keith, right yeah. out the muffler. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Good God, I love that. That made me proud, man. That made me proud. Yeah, man. I and know just, everyone was like, "What the fuck is that?" Yeah, yeah. And it's one of the funny parts to me is like it was keeping people up because it was so loud every yeah. four minutes. Yeah, it just sounds like a fucking tank, dude. That thing. It's just interesting, man. Like you know. Of course, it's not going to be the fastest thing out there because it's not built for not just for speed. It's just built for power, you know, right, power, right. endurance. And that's it's just it's super cool. Super cool to see a Camaro on something that doesn't in nowhere. It doesn't belong. Yeah, yeah. That course. yeah the, the fact that it kicked the GTE uh, field's ass and got a few LMP2s passed too. I mean, from what I was watching, like NASCAR was like 18th overall uh, at one point in what? a 62 car field. Wow. Yeah, it was it was doing pretty damn good. It wasn't for that gearbox issue, they probably would have finished top 20, at That's least probably top 15. Crazy. That's crazy to think about how many cars I think beat out. So the the brakes, the braking. And that, I mean, that makes sense. Like the guy broke down. You just have a bigger vehicle. Right, it's a know? bigger vehicle and it's a little sketchy to get through those turns because yeah. you've got so much weight coming through there. But then again, that weight is a blessing in other areas. And that's why I love motorsports because it's kind of like, it balances. It, there's a balance. There's, you gotta strategically lose some battles to win others. And it's right. up to you to decide which are you going to give up. The braking or the just sheer power. Mm -hmm. and you, you went with power over the agility of a car. Right? Yeah, exactly. And that proved very fruitful. And the fact that it was like a step away from just shooting flames out of an <laughs> exhaust like a goddamn dragon is awesome. Yeah, yeah. Gotta love that, man. Man. But, but you know, Driver 61... Thanks right. for this great video. Automatic two thumbs up to yeah. you for making a great video. And again, y'all, thanks for the 100,000 subscribers. This is the first part of the two-part motorsport tribute yes. of our celebration of 100,000 subscribers on this channel. That's a mouthful right there, dude. Yeah. Yeah, I got it through. <laughs> yeah, I, I, we can edit this. Oh, man, but it's awesome, man. It's awesome. Yeah. It's good. It's good to be here. Good to be here. Good to Always. be here. If you're new here, there's somewhere around to subscribe and watch another video. In the meantime, we say wash your hands, grab your toes, wipe your ass, blow your nose, embrace the suck. Unplug and do something epic, guys. See y'all in the next one. Later. Fellas, we could be that mistake. Let's do this.